Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Follow me on Instagram and see some of my artwork before it hits YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share my YouTube channel, my Instagram with your crafty friends. Today we're doing Index Card A Day iCAD number 5. It's entitled Believe. With this iCAD, I'm featuring the technique from Mixed Media Technique Tag number 16, Brayard Beginnings. Links to products used in this video can be found in the description box below for your convenience. So today we're getting ready to do Index Card A Day iCAD number 5. And I'm going to feature the Mixed Media Technique tag number 15, which was entitled Brayard Beginnings. So obviously, in order to do that, you need a brayer. And I have this Speedball brayer, and I'll put a link to it in the description box, along with any of the other materials that are being used. Now, what we're going to do is use the brayer to put on the background color, and you get a very different texture. On, on there. You get some patterning, it kind of can look kind of like plaid, but it gets a different kind of texture. Now we're, what we're going to do is create a whole bunch of brayered backgrounds and I'm just going to be playing with a certain set of colors. I'm going to use light blue permanent and dioxazine purple and maybe some deep violet but I've, I've discovered you know with the blues and the purples I, um, I've discovered that this color combination with this light blue permanent and the purple really pops off the page and I'm thinking that that's going to really make an interesting background and I'll probably be adding white now in the Braird Beginnings video and I'll uh, put a link to that video. You can create backgrounds for that or you can create papers that you can use in collage. You can create your own embellishments like I did with the butterfly embellishment. On there, here we've added um, texture paste on top. Here we've done some stenciling on top of the already interesting background. Um, and here we just put a focal point. So not sure exactly where that's going. So now I could just brayer onto the one little iCAD that we've got going. But I find that when you're brayering, you get better movement with the brayer, better patterning if you are at least on a size paper, like a size copy paper. So you can put it on copy paper. It also brayers so extremely nicely and interestingly onto um, tissue paper. So I pulled some of that out. So I have the colors, I have the paper. Off to the side I'm going to be putting the colors onto this silicone mat and it's just to brayer off of. You could also use a jelly plate or just your craft mat or just even another piece of paper if that is all that you have. I just find that this, you know, kind of holds the paint a little bit. But that, because I don't have a whole lot of space, is simply going to be off to the side in case you're wondering what I'm doing out there. So when you're brayering, I find you kind of do a session. So you can pick a color scheme like I have. Now my color scheme, if we grab the color wheel, and you know how I love my color wheel, it's in here. These are the colors. They're next to each other. So when I'm putting on the brayer, the layers, I don't have to worry about it making mud. Now you could pick blue, green, violet, and you could pick yellow and do that trio. The only thing cautionary thing with, with that is you need to make sure that the yellow is dry or these colors are dry before you layer on the next color 
because you don't want to make that ugly color. You can still mix colors from anywhere on the color wheel. You know, so pick any color and try it. And then you can add black, white, some metallics along that line. So the rest of the video, I'm speeding up to double time just because it got a little bit lengthy and for editing purposes, I'm in a bit of a rush, so it's easier to do a voiceover. So if you're really liking the real-time videos, let me know in the description box. So when you're putting on the brayering, you're going crosshatch, you're going up, you're down, you're turning the papers. And again, you know, if you want to get the step-by-step -step instructions, the do's, the don'ts, the ins and outs, you know, please go to Mixed Media Technique Tag video number 16 and, and check that out. Now, when you're doing this, you know, experiment with different colors, and combinations, even within this, you know, sometimes I'm putting the diox purple first, sometimes I'm putting the light blue permanent, um, layering white in between, and you can put as many layers or as few layers as you want. Once you've got the paint out and once you have the mess going on, you might as well make more backgrounds. It, it can always go into your stash. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm a big advocate of building your stash because then you have the, the supplies and creating becomes a little bit easier. It's when you have to start creating every single step, every single component that it can become a little bit lengthy. So you put white on, sometimes if you've got a color and it's too dark, you want to brighten it up, or you want to layer the colors on top of white, which gives a very different look. So you just have to play with it. This is the time, especially if you're a beginner working with colors, this is where you're going to learn about color combinations and what works and what doesn't. And it's just going to free your mind and you're just going to have fun playing with color. You can see the texture there that you get from brayering. Now, the reason, you know, I've seen people doing the brayering technique right on their art journal pages. What really sold me with brayering was when I would do my jelly printing and I would brayer off on, you know, old magazine pages or, or that kind of stuff. And often those were my absolute favorite colored papers. So then I said, well, why can't you create this on your own? You know, and I'm not even trying to get every little part. I'm kind of skipping across. And the randomness is what is going to add so much interest to your background. And you can see we're just adding layers of interest. But, you know, for fast, speedy um, background, this, this really is. So I'm just cycling through the colors until I really like what I see. And there's some more just wonderful, wonderful texture. It even feels different, the paper. So you can use just regular copy paper. You can use magazine paper. Uh, here I'm using, you know, gift bag tissue paper and I'm just adding it on. Now those wrinkles are just going to add to it, the, you know, and it's going to collage very differently onto um, an item because it, the tissue paper will kind of turn translucent. So it will give a slightly different effect. So here, you know, it's I'm catching it in the roller because I'm going so fast. But I'm not worried about that because when it comes to collaging this down, you know, I can add piecemeal. That's not going to be a problem at all. I couldn't find my deli paper, so I, I think that was part of, of my problem here. But it's making some really interesting backgrounds.
Now, if I was just doing this on my own, I probably wouldn't have made all these sheets. I would have gone into my stash that I have. Now here, this is an example of a canvas where I used brayered papers to make the flowers. And when I, the, this was a um, challenge and you had to use yellow, aqua and gray. And I've never used those color combinations. So I just got out the brayer and started playing with those colors to see what happens when they I start mixing them. And I learned a lot about how those colors play together enough to create that canvas, which I love, but I never would have done it without trying, right? So, and this is on um, tracing paper. Again, it's going to collage a little differently than the copy paper, than anything else. So in all, I probably have five or six background papers. And some are darker, some are lighter, some have more of the light blue permanent. You know, I'd like you to try these this color combination because I think it is an absolutely stunning color combination. But feel free to use whatever colors you want. Just keep it simple. You don't need to um, have too many colors. I think sometimes we just make it too complex. So once this is all dry, I'm just looking at these and I'm trying to decide, you know, what, what part of one of these do I want to use on the iCAD? Now I can kind of eyeball it and say, oh, I think this is it. But I have a system. I've made a set of templates and this one's for an ATC. And now I can just move this template around and get capture an interesting portion to use. So I made it for all the sizes that I typically create, including the iCAD, because I knew whether it's a braided papers or my gel prints or just, you know, papers that I use with uh, paper that I've used leftover paint. So I'm just looking for some interesting markings and, you know, just going. So I'm kind of liking that. And so now, now that I have where I'm going to do, I'm just going to audition a few of the possibilities. I painted these fe feathers, one purple, one the blue, and then I have this fairy. And I, I like the look of that fairy. And I, when I cut from my silhouette, I cut multiples. I cut different sizes, I cut different shapes, and then I just keep them in the plastic like that. You'll recognize that believe that was from, I had dug that out and was looking at it to use it in a previous iCAD, but I never did. So I'm kind of looking and I'm, I'm liking how this looks at this moment. Now I can use the background as is and keep it simple, like this sentiment says, or I can add more layers on it. And at this moment, I actually was gonna keep it simple and just go with the braided background that it was. And, well, you'll see, I added considerable amount of layers. I decided, probably because my mixed media technique tag, one of them had this bubble stencil on it. I said stenciled with white on top of, I think it was the blue. And I really, really loved that look. So, of course, if you've discovered something that you really like, duplicate it, use it to your benefit. So I'm kind of put positioning the bubbles where I think I want them to go um, using the template. And then I'm just going to do some stenciling. Now off to the side, I've just put out some white paint and I have a makeup sponge and I'm just putting layers of this paint on. Now I don't want it to be all opaque. I don't want pretty much any of it to be opaque. I still want to see some of the background. I just want to enhance the background that is. You could use mark making tools on top of this to add interest and to build layers. But what you'll note here, I am following the keep it simple because I'm staying with the same two colors, three colors, the white. I'm not introducing any more colors. And I think that's one of the things that I see, you know, or, you know, a lot of beginners 
complain about it. Just, I, there's just, they try to do too much and then they're unhappy. So, you know, keep it simple, cut back. I like the repetition of using the same over time. And I just love how this bubble stencil works. This is a Dilutions one. There's also a bubble stencil um, from Prima. And I'll put a link to both of those in the description box below. And I highly recommend a bubble stencil from whatever company. It's just one of those general ones. You can use it for under the sea. You can use it for the sky. You can use it just for an interesting kind of ethereal background like here. Um, it just it makes up the, co the core of good, good uh, mixed media supplies. Now the texture from the brayering is still there. The patterning from the brayering is still there. I still am benefiting from having this and the, the title of the mixed media technique is Brayered Beginnings. You know, while you can use it as is, and I have, you can add to it and use that as a jumping off point. So I am unsure if I want to leave this very white, if I want to paint it the dark purple or the light blue permanent. So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm thinking light blue, but you know, if, if I don't like it, once I paint this, I can always paint it purple or I can go back to white if I, if I want to, or do black and have it, have it as a silhouette. So I kind of like the blue. It's not really popping off the background. So I grabbed this Pebeo um, blue green iridescent medium. Now I'm going to put a link to a video where I show you how to create your own iridescent mediums or colors using just your regular craft paint or, you know, Liquitex basics and iridescent medium or silver paint. So you don't have to go and buy different tubes of paint to get that effect. I just thought with the fairy, I just want that maybe that little bit of shimmer. So the focal point here is kind of setting the, the pace. So now that I know what my focal point is, I'm going to just trace around here. Now I've traced around with a Stabilo All Pencil, which is water soluble. If you use a, I'm using a dark color so you can see it, but I'm not too worried because while I cut out a little extra, I know that the Stabilo, Stabilo All Pencil, once it gets wet, it's just gonna disappear and it's gonna fade into, um, fade away. But if I was doing this off camera and, and I didn't need you to see it, I would have maybe just used white, uh, my Stabilo all pencil in white or just a watercolor pencil in white. So there you saw me, I just applied water and I got rid of the lines. I go a little extra just so I make sure I cover it. I find if I cut it exactly, inevitably I have some parts that I miss. And I still managed to do that on this one. So I grab some of the light blue permanent and I'm just filling in any of the, the edges and any gaps where I didn't like wibbled when I cut or something. And I do go back and I use my archival, my cobalt blue. I have only, I think three colors of co of my archivals. I've got the black, I've got the cobalt blue and I've got plum. Oh, and I also have a purple and I'm not sure what color that is. So, but those are the colors that I tend to create with. So those are the colors that I have. So be true to yourself. If you do a lot of neutrals and you need a lot of, of browns, that's fine. I think I might be buying sepia. I, I, I'm thinking I could use that a lot for, especially with my script stamp. So I'm edging the fairy as well. She's very close to in color to what's in the background and I want her to stand out a little bit more. So that's my attempt here to doing that. So I'm moving, moving things around, trying to set up how I want this to work. And don't be afraid to turn your canvas. You know, a lot of times when I'm creating and I'm thinking a canvas is going to go landscape. And then at the very last minute, I end up doing it portrait. 
That happens more times than not because suddenly I just like it better. So I'm still fussing around, playing with the sentiments and trying to decide where I like it best. And that is part of the creative process. I thought this was a little light, so off to the side I took some of the Diox Purple and watered it down, and I'm just using the fan brush, bl brush to splatter here. And I'm, I really like that addition. As soon as it hit the paper, it was like, yes, that's exactly what I want. And you kind of have the repetition. You have the, the stenciling of the circles, and now you have the splatter of the circles. So it, I really haven't introduced something brand new. Although I am doing more and more layers, and I'm not done yet. As always, when you splatter, make sure you take time to dry it. It does take a little longer to dry because there might be globs of it. So I'm still, you know, fussing around with where I want things to go. Karen, there is no right or wrong. All of these places would work equally well. But, you know, I try them in different places and I just, in the end, I just go with what looks good to me. And if you're not sure where it should go, you know, if you like somebody's iCAD or art journal page or canvas, ask yourself why. What, what is it about it? And copy where they place things. You're, you're, you could be doing an entirely different page, but you could still follow their composition. That's what I've done. So just glued that all down with gel medium and I'm unhappy still with how the fairy is not popping out. So I grab my angle brush and I'm floating acrylic and I just use some Prussian blue um, fluid acrylic here. It's golden. It's the only fluid acry acrylic I own. And I'm just using the brush to go around. And when you're using the float technique, the shading here that I'm doing, you build up layers. Now, if that brush is too thick, you can get angle brushes that are smaller. And I just grabbed one to show you. And sometimes that's easier if you've got tight places or if, or if you just simply feel, feel more comfortable with that size. I'm used to even bigger than that angle brush, like a one inch angle brush when I did my folk art painting. And the truth is now that this is covered with matte medium, if even if I do get it on top of the fairy, I can easily remove it. So hopefully you can see how this shading really is making this fairy stand out. You could have taken a micron pen and outlined it. I prefer shading. And if you've watched any of my videos, you would you know that. And then I'm just, you know, I've got the, the paint there, so I'm going around the edges to make it stand out even more. And just pop. So, you know, there's so many layers because I've, I've added the shading layer. I've added the focal point layer. You can use Payne's Gray if you don't have Prussian Blue, but Prussian Blue is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite colors. I don't care if it's a fluid acrylic. I have the Grumbacher brand because you can't get it in Liquitex Basics, but it is, it is my yum color. So I'm shading. I do off camera go with my black archival and add even a darker edging. So I'm liking it. There's a little bit of sheen from the iridescent medium, the Pebio. And then I decide, you know, I need something that's going to make this all work together. So I grab some silver craft paint. I think this was a Martha Stewart brand. I'm thinning it down and grabbing my fan brush and I'm going to splatter the silver on there just to give it that little bit of metallic, which, you know, usually it's gold for me, but silver goes really well with the blue tones, blue and purple tones. 
I'm counting the layers. I'm thinking there's at least seven different layers on here. That wasn't the intent, but this iCAD went off on its own. Love how the silver splatters worked on here. It just added that finishing touch. So mixed media technique tag number 16, check it out. Here is the finished iCAD. And then I have some pictures of the brayered beginnings. This one is once I've stenciled it. So this is one that I've used on the background. And then here are some of the other brayered backgrounds. Just so you get an idea of the texture and the patterning that you can create using a brayer. Thanks for watching.